Well, again, thank you to everybody that's joined us today for this second session of the AgriBility Virtual National Training Workshop for 2017. Our presentation this afternoon is going to be on resources for veterans who are interested in farming and ranching. And our presenter, Aaron Kimbrough of uh, Texas AgriBility, I know that project has done extensive work with veterans, and so we look forward to um, what she's going to share with us today. Before we start, I'm going to give you just a few basic webinar instructions. Hopefully you have discovered that you can access audio either through the computer or through your phone. And in order to check that or test that, you can go to the Communicate menu that's at the top left of your screen. We also do have closed captionings available. So you'll need to go to the Media Viewer, which is on the lower right of your screen. Uh, make sure you open up that pod through the arrow, and then you'll probably have to enter some contact information and then uh, submit that in order to see the captions. Uh, you can also adjust the caption text size, color, that type of thing. You can uh, expand or contract the, uh, the options on the right side of your screen with the arrows, and you can also either contract or expand the size of that column. You need to click and drag along the border between the, uh, the right column and the presentation window in order to adjust that size. If you have any questions or comments about the presentation while it is taking place, please feel free to enter those into the chat window and you'll need to hit the send or submit button in order for us to see those. Uh, also, if you have questions during our question and answer period after the presentation, uh, you can click on the raise hand icon that should be near your name and we will do our best to enable your microphone or your phone line. And you can ask your question verbally that way. After the presentation and right before the question and answer period, there will be four quick survey questions that you can answer online. And those help us to get feedback about the presentation. Uh, we also are recording this presentation, and it will be archived on the agribility.org website under the online training link. If you have any problems in, in terms of technical issues, please use the chat window, or if you are not able to for some reason, you can email me, uh, jonesp at purdue.edu, which is also the email from which you received your webinar instructions. So you can simply reply to those instructions with your problem or question. For those of you who may not be familiar with AgriBility, we are sponsored by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and our focus is on working with people in agriculture that have some kind of dis disability or functional limitation. Every one of the AgriBility projects around the country uh, is a partnership between a land-grant university and at least one nonprofit disability services organization, and there are currently 20 projects around the country. The uh, National AgriBility Project, again, is led by Purdue's Breaking New Ground Resource Center here in West Lafayette, Indiana. Our partners on the uh, National AgriBility Project include Goodwill of the Finger Lakes, April, which is the Association of Programs for Rural Independent Living, and Colorado State University. If you have any uh, more questions about AgriBility or would like to review some of the resources we have or some of the archived webinars that are available, you can visit the agribility.org website. At this point, I'm going to mute my microphone, turn off my camera, and turn things over to Aaron Kimbrough, and then I will return at the end for the question and answer period. Thank you, Paul, and howdy to all. Thanks for spending the afternoon with us, and uh, I'm excited to get to talk with you and tell you a little bit more about uh, resources for veteran farmers and ranchers. We are, um, I'm a program coordinator with Texas AgriAbility. I work about 25% time on uh, this project, and we've also started another project that we'll talk a little bit about, um, the Battleground to Breaking Ground Entrepreneurial Training Project, um, which is also a USDA-funded project. 
uh, that I work on uh, most of the time. So I uh, wanted to tell you a little bit on this first slide, you will see a list of our partners. So we've got uh, quite a few uh, that have really benefited us and, and helped us make the project possible. So I, as you're going through uh, the resources that we've got, I can't stress enough that the best resources we have are in each other. So um, you'll have my contact information as we finish the, the, uh, the slides, and then whatever you need, uh, you'll please feel free to reach out to me. I also here have my program assistant, which is BJ Leggett, and he's behind me. He'll be presenting a slide here in just a little bit. Um, so uh, he's a veteran on our project and uh, is on the Battleground Breaking Ground project. So with that, we will move forward. So today, the learning objectives we have, we're going to identify key resources for veterans interested in starting and operating agriculture businesses. I have veteran-specific resources, but what i found uh, mostly is that there's a lot of resources out there that serve veterans, but like our projects, we also serve other beginning farmers and ranchers. So they're really good um, resources really for everybody. Um, some of them are just uh, specific, have some veteran-specific things. So uh, the second thing that we'll do is we'll understand the goals of Texas Agribility Battleground or Breaking Ground Entrepreneurial Training Project. It's a long name, it's a little hard to get used to, but, uh, but uh, we like it and uh, most people have been able to find us with that name. And we'll also incorporate a diverse set of resources and programs specific for veteran farmers and ranchers. So that point uh, is actually going to be towards the end of the presentation where we're going to open it up for comments. And um, I would like to get your opinions on what uh, resources you found are the most helpful, most successful. Um, it's a short presentation today, so I'm going to be fast and quick. Um, so there's not just a ton of detail, but uh, like I said, you've got my contact information. You have any questions about any of the programs, please let me know, and I'm uh, happy to answer those for you. So the first... Uh, Probably the first and most used veteran-specific resource that we have is Farmer Veteran Coalition. Uh, Farmer Veteran Coalition is uh, an amazing supportive network of uh, farmers and veterans um, that uh, is a national program. The FEC is actually a national program. They're housed in California, um, and they do three uh, really important things. They offer a lot of resources. Um, they offer a Homegrown by Heroes label, so for veterans that are farming and ranching, they can actually uh, apply to get their own label, which helps uh, kind of diversify their products in the market. They also have this fellowship fund. The fellowship funds are a uh, essentially a grant. So they're a grant for folks who have already started farming and ranching. So you have to actually have um, a farm and ranch. You do have to submit a business plan, but those grants uh, are about up to $5,000 uh, for operating costs. So we've seen them used for tractor purchases, for fencing, for livestock, for uh, shoots and pens. Uh, they're used a lot of different things, um, and they're supported by a couple of sponsors uh, that have just been really great. Um, like the Bob Woodruff Foundation and those kinds of things. So these uh, fellowship funds actually are currently open. Um, to my understanding, I think they're open until uh, March. So if you have um, anybody who's interested, uh, those former veterans, uh, send them to the fellowship funds. It's an application process, so it is competitive. Um, and uh, I, I expect them to be hosting a webinar fairly soon. You can jump on and join their newsletter, and they'll announce those webinars through that. They also have state chapters. Um, some states uh, that are already established, um, like Michigan, hosted our uh, the Farmer Veteran Coalition Conference this year. Um, I think there's four state chapters, including uh, Vermont, um, and I can't remember the other ones. I know uh, my husband, John Kimbrough, has started the Texas state chapter. Um, and in those state chapters, each chapter, uh, each state does um, some different things, some different networking events, um, some different, uh, uh, just different things that are applicable to the people uh, in the state of Texas. So um, that's a, really essentially a reason that they diversified um, and got the state chapter started, is so that we can connect more on a local and regional basis. Another resource that we really like is the National Center for Appropriate Technology. I mean, most of you know them as NCAP. 
they're a great resource. Um, they also have a workshop it's called Arm to Farm. Arm to Farm is a five-day workshop. It's hosted around the country. Um, and this is where they actually take veterans, they put them on farms, uh, they do business education and hands-on uh, training. They do a lot of different things over those five days. All the veteran has to do is get there um, and so pay for the money to get there and pay for the money home, and they'll cover the other expenses typically while they're there, so the lodging and food and those kinds of things. So it's a great program. Um, their, the side that they have that are their resources is this ATRA, A-T-T-R-A, uh, and the way I've done these slides is that I just put the names of uh, the programs up there. You can Google those um, and it'll bring you right to them. The, I didn't put all the links up there because I thought that would be really difficult for everybody to follow um, if we just had slides and slides of links. So uh, definitely suggest you look at ATRA. Um, on the NCAT ATRA website, they also also have a listing for internships. So if you have um, farmers, veterans, uh, beginning farmer ranchers who need that hands-on experience to figure out what they want to do, how it's being done, I uh, highly suggest you have them jump on and look at the internships that are available. It's a, it's a locator, essentially, uh, kind of a Craigslist for internships. Um, and they can also, if you have farmers and ranchers that maybe need interns, they need an additional hand um, around on the farm, they can actually apply to uh, put their farms on this uh, kind of a matchmaking site, and then they can people can see the internships they have available. So those are, again, our veteran-specific resources. The other programs we'll cover in just a minute are... Uh, they're not specific to veterans, but they have a veteran component. So we'll talk a little bit about those um, that we work with extensively. And then, um, but this next slide, I'm actually going to hand over to BJ. This uh, slide is veteran-specific resources. These really don't have a lot to do with uh, farming and ranching. This is more uh, resources that veterans would need um, applying for benefits, um, getting additional support in your communities, those kinds of things. So I'm going to share the screen, and BJ is going to walk you through a couple of those, um, those websites real quick. And we're going to share monitor two. And okay, so let me hand it over to him and I will be right back. All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is BJ Leggett and I'm the program assistant for the Battleground to Breaking Ground project here for uh, the AgriLife Extension at Texas A&M. And uh, we thought that some of these uh, links here would uh, kind of help your guys get uh, access to benefits for education. Um, health care benefits. Um, there's other things, and as we go through here, I'll, I'll kind of uh, get into that more. But the first one I wanted to do is uh, the first one I wanted to do is e-benefits. Um, I believe every veteran should have a an account with them, um, more especially if you have a service connected disability. Um, I have a service connected disability. And so uh, you can manage everything here. You can even, um, if you notice, it has an apply link right here. And you can honestly apply for any benefit that the VA has from this website. Uh, to include, if you feel like you want to go to college somewhere and they have a program, you can come on here and you can actually apply your benefits and they will send it to um, the college of your choice. Or um, after you have... Um, started benefits with the VA, you can actually manage them. This will tell you, you know, how your claim is is going along. Um, I mean, you can change anything in here. It could, you can also download your VA letters, which is how you apply for things such as uh, loans, uh, where you get your veteran's preference or anything like that. All of that can be done from here. Uh, for example, a certificate of eligibility for a home loan. If you're planning on using any of those USDA programs that um, give you veterans preference, this page right here will help you quite a bit. And if you if you click on apply, um, I'll take you to that right there. And it literally runs through almost every benefit the VA has to offer. Okay, um, the next page is the IAVA. This is the Iraqi and Afghanistan Veterans Association. Um, this is something that is relatively new to me. Actually, uh, Aaron um, introduced me to this uh, about two or three months ago, 
And um, honestly, I was not aware of this page. Um, none of my brothers that I deployed with were aware of this page. And they have some interesting resources where you can, um, they do things. Let me get into a couple of them and I'll show you. Um, so here's some of the programs that they do. Like they do these vet togethers. And uh, if you if you have veterans that are, um, that you're getting involved with your programs, this is a way for them to connect to each other. Um, I, I'm actually a member of the Houston uh, branch of this and they're actually having a vet together um, at the last Saturday of every month I believe and uh, you know they they have a little sign-up sheet where each guy brings a little something and they just talk about their experiences together and that is very important to veterans um, this one-on-one -on -one support right here um, this is transitional help um, this organization is big on transitioning from active duty or even deployment if you have guys that are in the National Guard or the Reserves uh, and they're coming back and they're trying to reintegrate into the civilian life, uh, this link here can definitely help them. Um, they also have an advocacy link where um, they lobby for things up in Washington, D.C., so if you've got guys that really want to get involved with that. And then um, they have ways for you to become a leader, and that's basically getting you involved with the chapters at the local level. Uh, but more importantly, I want to show you what you can do right here. Um, let me Let me try and find that one. Hold on. Let me get into it. Here we go. So if you have guys that are trying to get a, a certain agenda taken care of, um, whether that be for farming and ranching or anything like that, um, a lot of the guys right now are in a big push for um, stopping the decrease of uh, veterans programs. So this would be a way that you can get to that. The next page we got is called TextVet. Um, this is basically a one-stop shop for uh, veterans. This is um, just like eBenefits, but a lot more user-friendly. Um, every state has one of these. I I've checked, and every state has one. It may not be called TextVet or anything like that, but if you search veterans resources for whatever state you're in, you will get brought to a page that is like this. And if you notice down here at the bottom of the page, they can do immediate access to these things, like this legal link will take you to veterans courts, the medical link will um, get you involved with the, the uh, whatever medical side of the VA you can get into, there's monetary resources, there's a jobs and business um, uh, kind of a networking deal, and they also have um, Job, jobs posted that are veteran specific. Um, they have social groups, women veterans in particular, uh, VA claims, uh, how you can get to and from things, education, uh, they have a, a, a calendar and how you can save on your property taxes. Um, and, and this is a Texas uh, designated thing because we have uh, property tax breaks for our veterans. Um, but the most important thing I want you to know is that if you click on one of these, you can actually send a person a message and they will call you from whatever um, entity they are from that you need help with. And this goes the same for almost all of the uh, state veteran resource websites that I have done. I mean, you can click on one of the links and it'll say, would you like someone to call you? And someone will give you a call. Um, um, I tried it out and what they do is they send you an email and give you a block of time to make available and then they call you during that block of time. This is military one source. Um, this is more of a, um, I, I like to get people to come here for things like mental health. Um, this is a great way if you're a veteran, uh, you get three free uh, phone consultations for any mental health issue that you may be facing. Uh, I know a lot of the younger guys um, might find this more useful, um, especially the guys that are new to coming back. And uh, you can go on here and, and how it works is uh, you can you can 
just like text vet, you can put in a request for somebody to give you a call, and they will shoot you an email and get, get a time for them to call. And uh, this also has resources for employment as well, but this is mainly for mental health and things like that. Uh, I put the DAV in here because uh, the DAV goes hand in hand with things like VFW, um, IAVA, um, you know, the Texas Veterans Association, things like that. Um, these guys are a one-stop shop as well, but they are also will help veterans who are trying to make claims with the VA, and um, they will do it in, on your behalf for you. So a lot of the fighting and waiting and responding can be done with the DAV or VFW, whatever entity you choose. Um, I just know if you're trying to get a service-connected disability taken care of, the DAV will definitely help you get that taken care of. Um, this is another uh, state-supported website. This is the Texas Veterans Commission. Um, I know most states have one just like this. Um, this is a state-run entity here in Texas that um, connects veterans to their state um, benefits. Uh, for example, here in um, Texas, we have the Texas Veterans Land Board, and that is a great resource for those that are wanting to become farmers and or ranchers. Um, because they can set you up with veterans only funded land um, where you can get, you know, for pennies on the dollar in most cases with the Veterans Land Board, um, you can get acreage and things like that. Um, but this is kind of like text vet. There's, an, um, you know, employment services and things like that. Um, they work with the uh, Texas Workforce Commission and things like that. And again, you'd have to check with your state websites uh, and stuff like that, but these are one-stop shops and I just wanted to include this as well. And then the last uh, web page that I have is the USO. This is called RP6. Um, it was uh, created in conjunction with RallyPoint, which is a veteran social media site. And uh, they also help lobby for veteran interest and things like that. But these uh, resources down here are fantastic for transitioning families. Um, you can take some time to peruse through this and, and just see where these take you. But um, there's a lot of things that can help military families if their husbands are abroad. Uh, transitioning services, uh, wounded and injured service members um, that can take you to um, – you know, help support groups for that. Um, there's also USO uh, entertainment and things like that that you can get into here. But um, if you if you ever need anything, um, they're broken down by the transition offices, and you can have your um, veteran contact them directly. Um, again, that's all I have for today. I really appreciate everybody's attention. <laughs> Thank you, EJ. Let me stop sharing this real quick and we'll get back to our presentation. All right, um, and so uh, the last one I wanted to mention on that slide is your county service officers. And your county service officers, um, they're county supported. You typically have one for every county. I just put in whatever county I'm looking for and the uh, veteran service officer. And that brings up uh, the veteran, and it's typically a veteran in a position in the county um, who is familiar with benefits and they can help you apply for benefits, appeals, um, help you get your military documentation, lots of different things. I really like our county service officers. They've always been really good to me um, and to our, the veterans that I've sent to them. So I like those guys uh, and I suggest them if you can. One other thing I wanted to mention. Um, it's difficult, especially in a state like Texas, where we uh, have such a huge veteran population um, and so many veterans programs to kind of decipher them all. Um, one thing that I did do uh, that I found really helpful was we applied for a grant, Texas Veterans Commission, um, and a lot of times your Department of Military Affairs uh, or uh, military uh, in your state will have uh, grants that they give out. So here in Texas, we've got one, it's the Veterans Fund, um, and I, we applied for that grant. Uh, and what I did is I got a list of all the other folks who applied for that grant, and there were close to, I think, 150 of uh, organizations and nonprofits that support veterans in the state of Texas. Um, it also said what they did and what they were applying for so that I could see what other services were available uh, across the state. So I definitely suggest that if you can. Um, 
So some other resources I wanted to talk about that uh, they're not veteran specific, but they do have some veteran set aside category stuff. And I'll, I'll talk about that some. So we're gonna breeze through these really quickly. Um, so again, if you have any questions, just call me, send me an email, uh, text me, whatever you need to do when we finish. Um, so USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service um, is a national program. Most counties uh, across the uh, United States has a NRCS office. Most of you guys know them as NRCS. This is the first place I have all of our beginning farmer ranchers and our veterans go to because this conservation plan is what I want them to have. Conservation plan is part of the technical assistance side of the NRCS. Um, the person can just call the NRCS office, request them to come out um, to look at their own piece of land. Now, if it's a piece of land that they don't own, they actually have to get permission um, from the landowner to do this, or if they have a lease, they can do it. Um, but like if you're looking for buy, to buy land, typically you can't send an NRCS officer out there. Uh, they have to have permission from the owner. But what they can do is, for example, if you are um, in a, an area and you want to, let's say, do cow-calf production, um, but you're, it's a really heavily wooded area that doesn't typically support cow-calf, these guys can pull up a map, they can look at your soils, they can look at your water, they can look at the land, um, and they can tell you maybe that's a great idea or maybe that's not. But once once you, get, uh, once you get your land, call them up, have them come out and do a conservation plan. They will do the same thing. They'll walk the property with you. They can tell you about uh, what grasses you have, what forages you have available, um, what kind of water sources you have available. They can give you different ideas on how to improve your land, um, and they can talk about the programs that they have available, which leads us into the Environmental Quality Incentives Program. We call it the EQIP uh, for short. NRCS has a lot of programs. This EQIP program is the one I'm most familiar with, so I'm not saying it's an extensive list of their programs. They've got lots of easement programs, um, other things like that. Um, but when it was explained to me that it, this is kind of a stepwise process. So step one, get your conservation plan. Step two, you want to apply for your uh, EQIP program. And your EQIP program is a cost share program. So they're going to cost share things like, that are conservation practices that you guys agree on. So maybe it's improving your grasses and putting in cover crops. Maybe it's putting in cross fencing. Maybe it's building another tank. Um, whatever it is, um, they can, like I said, uh, cost share this with you. So the cool thing about being a veteran, you also have to begin, be a beginning farmer a rancher, which means you haven't uh, owned or operated your own ranch for more than, I think it's more than three years in the last 10 years, um, will apply you and you get a higher set aside. So as a veteran and a beginning farmer rancher, you get a higher set aside of money or a higher percentage of cost share for whatever um, practices you guys decide to do. So um, if you want to do a hoop house, maybe um, as a veteran and a beginning farmer rancher, you might get you know a 90% cost share, whereas um, someone who's not a veteran uh, would get like 60% or something like that. So and I don't know, and it varies from county to county on what per those percentages percentages are, so you actually have to talk to your NRCS office in your county. You can locate those on the USDA NRCS website. It's really, you just go to locate your service center and then you can click on it from there. Um, the third step of that program is the Conservation Stewardship Program. So once you've gone through the equip, you've set up all the things that you want to do, you've put in your cross fences and you've planted your pastures and you've got your water all sorted out, they have monies that they distribute to, uh, to owners and operators for doing things that um, protect the land and conserve the land. Um, maybe your uh, doing things like putting in extra watering for livestock or, or sorry, for wildlife, or you're um, doing things that uh, protect water runoff, um, you know, those kinds of things. So they actually uh, have monies that set aside to do for those programs. And again, um, there are some veterans preference um, for, especially for new beginning farmer ranchers. So that's where I send everybody. Step one, get your conservation plan, talk to NRCS. Um, then you've got your USDA Farm Service Agency. So uh, USDA Farm Service Agency is where you're going to get your farm number. If you own and operate your uh, piece of land, you need a farm number um, because your farm numbers will actually, uh, they work hand in hand. They're usually in the same office with NRCS. You need a farm number to apply for NRCS programs. 
So uh, FSA, I think you need your deed or your lease, then they'll establish, kind of give you the outline um, of your land, and that's kind of how they keep records. Those are great for applying for FSA programs. Um, here I just talked about the loans, because those are what we use mo most often. But FSA does have programs. They have a non-insured um, disaster program. They have emergency loans. They have uh, tree disaster assistance. Um, Let's see, forage, uh, a forage protection uh, program. So they've got a lot of programs. Uh, I'm just not as familiar with those as I am with the uh, FSA's uh, homeowner, or sorry, the loan side. So on the loan side, they have uh, direct and guaranteed home ownership loans, and they have direct and guaranteed operating loans as well as microloans. Those home ownership loans is an amazing program. However, there are some eligibility um, things like uh, you have to have a certain number of experience or a certain number of years of experience uh, to apply for those home ownership loans. Typically it's set at three years, but if you are a veteran and you have um, management experience in the military, they can sometimes knock off a year of that experience, so you only have to have actually two years of that owner operator experience. So that's a, um, a great thing to do. And so let's say you're a veteran, uh, you want to get into farming and ranching, um, you don't meet that two years just yet, um, but you want to lease some property and you need some help with operating expenses, you can do the direct and guaranteed operating loans. Um, those loans are, I think they're up to 300, the uh, direct ownership is 300,000, uh, the guaranteed is much higher. but. Um, if you, let's say you only need $20,000 to put in some new fencing, um, buy a trailer, those kinds of things, and I would highly suggest looking at the microloan. Uh, my husband and I, we do grass-fed beef, and um, we do goats and chickens and those kinds of things. We use uh, FSA's microloan, um, and it's been super helpful for us. We've really enjoyed it. Um, so uh, I do recommend their programs. They're a great organization to work with. Uh, so again, to find that, uh, look, look up your USDA FSA, um, go to Locate Your Service Center, and you will uh, come across those guys and you can contact them. Just, uh, you can make an appointment, go in and see them and hang out with them, um, or give them a call, uh, or I can connect you uh, wherever you are as well. So, uh, second part of our, I guess we're on third program, huh? Uh, USDA Rural Development um, has some programs that are uh, specific for our farmers and ranchers. Their Rural Energy for America program, which is a cost share program um, that for doing things like sustainable energy. So if you're going to put in wind, solar, uh, water energy, you're going to change out the light bulbs in your barn to being more energy efficient, um, those kinds of things. Um, I know a lot of dairies use REAP. It's called the um, Rural Energy for America is REAP. Um, so that's a good program. Also that value-added producer grant is a grant specific for, um, for producers that if you want to change something from its natural state to a marketable commodity or, or marketable um, product, then you can use that value-added producer grant. Um, and again, just you look up USDA Rural Development and search one of those key terms and it should take you right to them. Uh, I really like this USDA New Farmers tool. They've got a discovery tool down here. When you pull up the website, it's going to be a button that's on your right-hand side that says discovery tool. You can click on that button and you can just kind of go through um, who you are. So maybe I'm a veteran, um, I'm a woman, I'm a, um, I'm a person who's looking for land. So it kind of goes through a couple of different questions um, that leads you to a list of resources. Uh, so I like that program. Um, there's uh, this next one is USDA Agriculture Marketing Service, we call them AMS. So they do have grants is one thing they do. I did put this link down. Um, they seem to be a little bit harder to navigate for me personally, so I wanted you to have this link. Um, but the two grants that they offer that uh, are most used by uh, the folks I work with are the Local Food Promotion Program grant and the Farmers Market Promotion Program grant. Both of those grants um, are used to promote the use and, uh, of local foods and local food um, uh, consumption. So that's not, uh, we also have, let's see, they administer the organic uh, cost share program. So if you want to do organic, they have a cost share program, which I have heard is actually going to be um, a partnership through AMS and your uh, farm service agency. It was for formerly under your state. 
um, but I think it's going to go through FSA now. Um, they also have a sheep and goat marketing grant. They have, um, uh, what other ones do they have? Uh, specialty crop block grants. That's another one. If you're uh, interested in specialty crops and you're not doing um, traditional, uh, typically like what we consider commodity crops, row crops, uh, sorghum, grain, or cotton, um, those big commodity crops, uh, that specialty crop block grant may be good for you. It can't benefit just one person. It has to benefit a group. So if you're part of a co-op or an association or a network of producers, you can use that grant. Um, I, I really liked it. Um, the Department of Agriculture is another great resource. You have one in all your states. Um, in Texas, we have um, a Young Farmers Grant that's been really useful. My husband and I got it last year. Um, and we've loved it. It's a cost share program, but it's my understanding I'm one of the few states who do that. But uh, I was in Michigan recently, and they do an amazing, your, the food and agriculture folks in Michigan, um, amazing, and they're really supportive of local foods and local farms. Um, they have lots of programs that support them. Um, so check with your Department of Agriculture, see what grants they have, money is available, resources they have, um, uh, and they should be able to help you. So uh, some others, Sustainable Agricultural Research and Education, where they're called SAIR. Uh, SAIR is uh, an organization, um, I think they're nonprofit, I'm not, if I'm, I might be mistaken on that, but they're broken up into regions, and so each of those regions it has money that they give away through different grants. There's graduate assistant grants, there's producer grants, there's research and education agency grants, lots of different grants, lots of different monies available to do different things. Um, so just hop on. The grant deadlines vary by the region that you're in, so make sure you check out whatever region you're in. And uh, they also have a really great uh, education section um, where they have all these books and resources available for our farmers and ranchers. And uh, we just requested um, a couple, and they sent me two boxes of uh, books and education for our farmers and ranchers. So I uh, really like those guys. Uh, they're very supportive. Farm credits, uh, capital farm credits, and um, the farm credit for the South uh, is actually one of um, our big supporters. They do a lot of different things for us, support of a lot of our programs. Um, they have different programs. They do loans. Um, they offer, also offer discounts on different services. They have an education piece that I've really enjoyed and used extensively. Um, Again, farm credit is broken up into regions. Um, the most one that I've attended um, is this one that's called the Farm Credit East. It's You click on Farm Credit East, you go to Knowledge Exchange, and you go to Webinars. So uh, under those webinars, they do beginning basics for uh, farmers and ranchers. Um, they do some things on programs, and uh, they were just really good. I really liked the Farm Credit East Knowledge Exchange. Um, but it varies from region to region on what they have available. So uh, just check out the different regions, see what they have. Um, it's free to you. So um, again, all the, the resources that we're, I'm telling you about are all free for you to, to look into and to call, um, talk to you about what they have available. They do also do some business consulting and uh, they do help you with grant writing. So if you're a producer and you need some help with grant writing, they do grant writing help. So those are good resources for you to have. Um, I'm going to speed this up a little bit, so I know I'm probably already going really fast, um, So, but we're going to try and work through this. Um, HMI, Holistic Management International, is a program that I've attended. I'm a graduate of their program. They do a, uh, intense rotational grazing and regenerative agriculture through the use of livestock, typically. Um, they also do it in vegetable production. Uh, they have online courses and field days. It's a national program. Um, can't suggest them enough. Uh, and I'll just give you a short story. We have a producer who is an HMI graduate um, he raises eight head of cattle on 16 acres in San Antonio, which is dang near impossible. San Antonio gets kind of dry out there. Um, but through this use of intense rotational grazing, he moves them through 150 by 50 foot paddocks every day. Um, and he makes roughly seven to $8,000 a steer. He does uh, grass-fed beef. Uh, he's part of a nonprofit producers co-op. Um, I'm happy to, to connect you to him. Um, his name's Doug Haveman. He's on our website if you want to check that out. 
uh, Cornell Smaller Farms program, they do online courses. You do have to pay for the courses. They're about $250, but um, they're really not that expensive. Um, and they do field days as well uh, up in the north. They're, I think they're in New York. So um, if you're up there, you want to do field days, um, but we use these online courses. Uh, we are part of Texas Agribilly is part of the National Incubator Farm Training Initiative. We're NIFTI. Um, we're part of their network. Um, they have lots of resources to help you build an incubator farm, which is a new project, the Agribility Project, um, the Battleground and Breaking Ground, uh, has two incubator farms. We'll talk a little bit more about what they are. So if you're interested in having a farm that provides training um, and lets people lease pieces of land, um, so they can start their own operations. That's what an incubator farm is. Uh, I highly, highly suggest you get uh, join their network, come to their field school. It's once a year. It's a uh, time for us uh, incubator farms to get together and network best practices. And um, they do have a bunch of webinars on how to get started. They have a resource page that has tons of manuals and those kinds of things, how to start incubator farms. Um, how to fund them, uh, how to run them, all those kinds of things. Uh, Farm Answers down here is a uh, just a, a database of resources that are available to you. Um, they have lots of great programs listed when I list them up, uh, so I put them on there. You can look at Farm Answers. Um, one thing I didn't mention is Farm Service Agencies um, pro is actually doing a Bridges to Opportunity that. Uh, it's kind of like a database of different programs that are available to help uh, all the different categories or beginning farmer ranchers or ranchers in general. So contact Farm Service Agency if you're a service provider and you want to get on their list, uh, kind of a searchable database that they can look up resources uh, for clients. Okay, so we're going to get into the Battlegrounds of Breaking Ground Entrepreneurial Training Project. Now it's a long name. Um, this project, we're just going to call it Battleground to Breaking Ground, um, was a project developed under Texas Agribility. It's a program we had initially developed a one-day workshop that we'll talk a little bit about. Um, and that program kind of morphed into uh, an incubator farm project. The reason is we talked to our farmers and ranchers, um, our veterans, what was their biggest barriers to, uh, to starting their own farms and ranches. The biggest barriers were uh, barriers uh, to accessing land and accessing capital. So we built a program to overcome those barriers. So how we our long-term goals, we're going to increase the number of veteran farmer, uh, veterans and other new beginning farmer ranchers in Texas and will enhance sustainability of Texas veterans and other new beginning farmer ranchers. The way we've decided to do that is we're going to provide a holistic approach. So we're not just going to teach them how to do business. We're going to also teach them how to do production. We're also going to give them um, resources that they can access as veterans um, through a couple different organizations. Um, so it's kind of an all-inclusive. Uh, we do face-to-face -face and online educational training. We do individual education plans. We offer hands-on learning, and we connect them to mentors. We will have a community of practice where our participants can connect together and kind of rely on each other for support. And we also offer an array of veterans transition and disability support services. Our primary audience will be veterans. 70% uh, of uh, the app, our 70 of the attendees to our uh, Battleground and Breaking Ground workshops have been veterans. We've assisted more than 600 uh, beginning farmers and ranchers since uh, 2012, and uh, historically 70% of those have been veterans. So that's kind of what we stuck with was the 70%. So um, the step one, uh, we called it the crawling. Um, so it's the attend the workshop, uh, learn about the resources that are available. It's a face-to-face, -face, about an eight-hour workshop. We talk about business plans. We overview services and um, resources that are available. We talk about funding um, that would be available. We brainstorm ideas. Um, and one of the most important things we do is connect you to other veterans. Um, it's, again, it's not closed uh, to anybody that's not a veteran. So we have other beginning farmers and ranchers there. But uh, a lot of our speakers are veterans. We have some veteran-specific programs that are there. 
Um, and our uh, one thing that we found is most important for our veterans is to give them time to connect with one another, um, because in the military it's really important that you connect to each other and rely on each other. Um, and also to connect you with who's actually going to be helping you um, when you call the office. So for example, if I do a workshop in Rusk County, um, all of the speakers are going to come from Rusk County, so that when, if you're a participant in that workshop, you call them Monday morning um, to your local office, you're going to get to talk to who you got to talk to at a workshop. So uh, we found that was important. Um, step two is the walking phase, uh, is applying to the Battleground to Breaking Ground project. Um, we have two application periods. They're going to be in the spring and the fall. Our uh, application for this spring is currently open. It's open until March 10th. Um, we did, it's specifically for veterans um, in Texas, but it is open to everybody. So um, if you have uh, veterans or other beginning farmer ranchers across uh, the country who need um, online course training and things like this planning for profit, marketing basics, planning with budgets, uh, kind of the business side of things, please have them apply to the program. Um, if they don't get in this time, don't lose heart. Uh, again, we have two application periods a year. So. And uh, another thing that we do, again, that peer-to-peer -peer support network is through that community of practice so that our veterans can support each other along with um, some structured support through like our agriculture economists and our other um, agri life extension specialists. You'll explore additional services like disability support, transition services, financial funding, and they'll actually develop a business plan. The business plan is going to serve as the application to the third phase of the program, which we, BJ has helped us deem, run. So your business plan will provide you access and application to that third phase of the program. We'll review them. We'll select applicants. Um, they'll complete 100 hours of hands-on training and mentorship, as well as receive a, a certificate of completion. Once they receive a certificate of completion, they can apply to um, leased lands at either the Milliken, Farm, or Milliken Reserve we have here in College Station or the DeSoto Farm, um, which is called FARM, Farmers Assisting or Training Military in DeSoto, Texas. So those will actually be um, farms where they can start their operations. They'll be provided land for lease, equipment, and access to markets. We also will have field days, um, just a few anticipated subjects that we'll cover. And it's just going to be based on participant needs. Um, we want to make sure that our um, folks in step three have complete um, kind of access to get all of their 100 hours. So if we have a bunch of participants who need to do grass-fed beef, we'll go out to grass-fed beef operation and do a field day. Here's the numbers that we expect to serve. So as you can see there at the bottom, we expect to serve 725, uh, really create 725 new beginning farmer rancher veterans uh, throughout Texas. Well, 70% of those will be veterans. So uh, we got a, our work cut out for us. So uh, like I said, send people. We're excited to help. Here's some just key partners. Uh, again, Farmers Assistant Returning Military, Millican Alliance, our Millican Reserve, uh, Texas Center for Rural Entrepreneurship, and Vet Advisors. Vet Advisors is kind of a cool piece that we threw in. Um, it's transition support so that our participants will be provided uh, transition support. There's online counseling, um, all different kinds of online resources so that we can access our veterans that are in the rural communities. So our next steps, we'll process applications. Again, that deadline is March 10th. We'll accept our first cohort, um, and then we're going to do a launch event. There's two launch events. April 28th will be College Station. June 23rd will be our Dallas event, um, and we'll actually launch into our program. We expect the uh, second stage of that program, the online courses, to last about 12 weeks, and then we'll give uh, the participants the rest of that year to complete their 100 hours. There's our contacts. Um, so, uh, again, I'm Erin Kimbrough. You've got my contact up there. Uh, you've got B.J. Leggett, um, and both of our directors, uh, Dr. Rick Peterson and Dr. Cheryl Grenwald, are on there. Um, I know that was fast and furious, you guys, and I appreciate you hanging in there with me. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, I'm here. Uh, so we'll open it up. If you have any other resources you think would need to be shared, happy to hear from you. Um, happy to take some questions and uh, do the survey. Thank, thank you, Aaron. Uh, thank you, Aaron and BJ, for the excellent presentation and the, the vast number of resources you've uh, presented to us. 
before we go into the question and answer period, I'm going to do the, the four pick quick poll questions. However, if you do have additional chat uh, or additional questions uh, for Aaron, please go ahead and either type that into the chat window or you can raise your hand. And after the polls, we will plan to activate your microphone or phone so that you can ask your questions verbally. At this point, I'm going to open the first poll question. And it simply asks your affiliation uh, in terms of uh, whether you belong to a particular organization. We realize that some of you may belong to multiple organizations, but please do your best to uh, pick one of the categories for us, please. Also, one request, if you did have multiple viewers, um, for example, if you're in an office and had several people looking uh, at the webinar from the same computer, if you could let us know that in the chat window, that helps us to keep track of our attendance. I'll give you a few more seconds on that poll before we close it and open the second one. Okay, I'm going to close the poll now. And hopefully you're able to see the poll results there. Second uh, poll, as soon as I save the Results from that one it involves information that was shared today. If you could tell us if the information was uh, valuable, if it met your expectations. And that poll is now open for you. A few reminders. Uh, we do have four more webinars in the 2017 Virtual National Training Workshop. So please uh, consider joining us tomorrow and or Thursday, and I'll let you know the specifics of those uh, presentations in just a, a little while. A few more seconds on that poll before we close. And I'm going to close that poll. Apparently some people are still responding because it's given you a few more seconds to complete that. Okay, and then poll results. I'll save those results. And our third question asks about the technology. If you had any problems, if you found it to be usable, appreciate your feedback on that. And if you did have any specific problems, you couldn't hear well or see well, um, if you could tell us those specifics in the chat window, that would be helpful for us to try to troubleshoot that for the future. We will give you a few more seconds on that one. And close the poll. And the results. And the final question. As soon as I save those results, final question involves, or it simply asks, based on today's session, would you attend another session in this series? And we do offer a number of webinars throughout the year. If you're not familiar with what we do uh, in the AgriAbility webinar series, approximately every other month, there are webinars. If you have not considered coming to our National Training Workshop, we would invite you to consider that. It's uh, March 20th to the 23rd, Knoxville, Tennessee, and you can find out more information and how to register at the agribility.org website. And we will close that poll. And show you the results. Okay, at this point I'm going to turn things over to Sean Ehlers who's assisting us on the webinar, and he will uh, lead us in terms of the uh, question and answer period.
Uh, you... Sean, do I need to go ahead and answer this? Talking. Um, yes, please. For veterans, okay. For veterans starting an agriculture venture, do you know of any companies that offer discounts for purchasing machinery? Um, for veterans that starting agriculture, uh, I know Kubota has been uh, really supportive. Um, I know they do tractor giveaways actually through the Farmer Veteran Coalition. Um, each of your Farmer Veteran Coalition uh, organizations and your state chapters, I know one of our goals is to work with, uh, with equipment dealers and to get uh, uh, equipment discounts. So uh, I don't know any specific Specifically, I know there's uh, you know some organizations locally that get a, a veterans discount because my husband's a veteran. Um, you know, get the discounts at Lowe's, Home Depot, uh, those kinds of things. But um, so I would just ask, uh, and uh, if it's a local organization, uh, if even if they don't currently, maybe that's something that they would be interested in doing. Um, also, talking to your co-ops. Uh, your states uh, usually have co-ops um, that you can be a part of that uh, might be interested in doing veterans discounts. Um, what has been my experience as an organization trying to work directly with the VA? Some have expressed frustration in trying to get their foot in the door with the VA. Okay, so I don't know. Um, so the VA, um, I've had good experiences and I've had not so good experiences, uh, honestly. Um, some of our VA counselors are super supportive um, and some have no idea uh, what I'm talking about when I'm talking about uh, agriculture. I can tell you that when I first, uh, the first experience with a, a VR counselor um, for VA, they had no idea that uh, agriculture was even in a, um, a possibility for somebody that had a, uh, a disability. So um, it's a lot about education and working with uh, with the counselors. Uh, as an agribility um, staff member, if we have a veteran that uh, has had struggles with a VA counselor, they can contact me and we do a lot of advocacy, uh, not advocacy, I do education. Uh, so I do a lot of educating counselors, but I do that the same with my state department. Uh, here in Texas, we've got a state-level contract with our uh, Texas Workforce Commission vocational rehab counselors where I can refer a veteran to my state-level VR, and I actually kind of circumvent having to go through the VA. Um, and then the uh, my Texas Workforce Commission counselors have a memorandum of understanding with VA VR. So if my state doesn't have enough money to fund our veterans, they can also pull from the money for uh, from the uh, veteran side, from the VA side. So yes, I understand many folks uh, struggle uh, working with the VA sometimes, but I think it's just uh, just due to they don't understand exactly what we want to do. Um, but um, for the most part, when we've provided them education um, and helped them understand that it is possible, uh, that they've been pretty supportive. So I hope that helps. We do have a couple more questions left. If, if any of you want to share resources or experiences, also feel free to uh, enter that information into the chat and we will make uh, others aware of that. Is there a minimum acreage or farm income level that I would need to meet to qualify for these veteran programs? Not to my own knowledge. Um, so one great thing about working with our programs uh, is they are uh, typically as supportive of the quarter acre farmer as they are the 3,000 acre farmer. So um, again, it has to do with some education sometimes. So for example, you might be working with uh, your NRCS agent uh, and you want to put in a quarter, well, we'll say uh, a garage of microgreens. Uh, they might not understand what, what that means and how you can make money off of that. Um, so it might be some education, um, but uh, if you can have some patience, uh, and again, I can't stress enough working with your uh, agribility project um, and your extension uh, folks to uh, to help that come across. So I haven't seen income that that really matters. Um, we did a business plan for uh, for a young man who had autism that had two chickens and. Uh, like two stalks of blueberries, and he qualified for programs. So I, I think he'd be fine. 
are most of our veterans working on a large scale agriculture like row crops or small scale agriculture like produce? Uh, most of our veterans, uh, it's really wide and broad, um, as broad as Texas is. Um, it, it depends on, on really, a, most of the time it depends on what the person has experience doing. Um, uh, we, I would say almost 50% of our uh, participants have no experience. Uh, so what we really focus a lot on is having, helping them understand uh, kind of some things that they like to do and again, really encouraging those internships, getting out and seeing how other farms and ranches work um, and, uh, and what they like to do. Because I can tell you, I thought goats were going to be a great and fun enterprise, and I've, I'm a cow-calf producer, and so I thought goats, I'm like, well, they're just like tiny cows, right? Uh, no, goats are far from tiny cows. Uh, so getting out there and actually learning how things work is, uh, and what you like to do is probably the best uh, advice I have. Um, but uh, I would say for the most part, we have mostly small, what I would consider a small scale operations, um, probably 50 acres or less. Um, I like the diversified farms. Uh, I know that uh, you can make a, to a lot of money um, typically faster in vegetable production um, just because you can grow a lot in a smaller area where livestock sometimes takes a lot of room. Um, but diversified operations, that's why I really uh, highly, highly suggest that holistic management international kind of way of doing things. Because um, if you're familiar with Joe Salatin or Alan Savory, uh, those are their, kind of the similar models. So uh, they incorporate a bunch of different things, a lot of different uh, revenue streams uh, so that you can make uh, a lot of money on a small bit of land because we know uh, land is, just keeps going up. Aaron, we did have one more question that came in uh, late. Um, sure. Are there any of these programs available to spouses of veterans and or Vietnam veterans? Yes. Um, so uh, the veteran, uh, what era they came from, um, I don't think matters for the programs that I'm aware of. Uh, veterans to them is veteran. Um, most of the time they do, uh, they do uh, figure that out, whether you have uh, like a DD-214 or um, you know, I can't remember, I think it was in the early 2000s where they changed over forms. As long as you have something certifying your veteran status, I think that's really all that matters. Um, for spouses, um, for the Arm to Farm program and the, uh, the Farmer Veteran Coalition program, I, you can have your spouse be the member and I think you can still, uh, still actually engage in those benefits. So, for example, uh, my husband's the veteran, um, but I'm also an FBC member under his membership, and we can apply for the uh, FBC fellowship funds. Um, and the Arm to Farm, if he wanted to go to Arm to Farm, um, to my understanding, the spouse also goes, if they want to. So, um, the other programs, uh, like the USDA programs, um, those are open to everybody, so you don't have to be a veteran, but if you want that veteran preference, um, the veteran needs to be uh, the person also included on the application. Okay, it looks like that's uh, all the questions we have at this point, all the questions and comments. So again, uh, thanks very much to Aaron and BJ for uh, sharing today. and. You'll see their contact information on the screen if you would like to take note of that and get in touch with them individually. We'll also, of course, be archiving this on our website if you'd like to come back later and check that out. So again, please feel free to join us for the rest of our webinars tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, Assistive Technology to Prevent Secondary Injury in Aging Farmers and then tomorrow at 3 Eastern time, we'll get some updates from NIFA on agribility and related programs. So that's, that's our USDA uh, sponsoring program in Washington. So uh, we hope that you will join us, and thank you for attending, and have a good rest of the day. Thanks, all.